Hi, I'm Heather McDonald and welcome to my show, Gold Country TV. And as you can see today, I'm in historic downtown Grass Valley. We also go to Nevada City, South County and Auburn. Hey, I'm Diane Helms. And I'm Christine Bradadini. Welcome to Grass Valley. Yes, we love Grass Valley. Christy was actually born here in Grass Valley. Great restaurants around here. Right now we're sitting in front of Sergio's. We've got outside dining, inside dining, and you can just about pick any restaurant you want to in the end of the week, can't you, Christy? Yes, you can, and I personally love the homemade yonki here. Yeah, I do too. We're going to take you for a tour a little bit here of all the areas that we like. And here we are in downtown Grass Valley at Smith Winery Tasting Room. Thank you. We're getting a nice taste of their local wine here that has been family owned for years. There are many great wineries here in Nevada County and this is just one of them. Thank you. Thank Cheers. You. Cheers. And I love looking at the vineyards, you know, when there's just rows and rows of vines growing in the pasture land. Which reminds me, pasture, we can go from pasture land and, and valleys to high mountain peaks just in our area alone. Yeah, just the other day, showing property, I went from one end of the county to the next and it was a gorgeous day, a beautiful drive and it's a good reminder of where we live and why we live here. It's just beautiful. One of my favorite things are the rivers. Oh, yes. The rivers are right at our fingertips and they're just such a great place to go cool off. And the trails, lots of hiking, mountain biking, horseback riding trails in this area. Yeah, there's just so much to offer here and I think it's just it's quality of life and family and just things to do, not just uh, if you're not into bicycling or, or hiking, if you're into just the, in history and checking out the area or music or theater or the arts. Um, there is just, there's just so much here. I know from young to old, whether you're retiring or beginning a family or it's just the place you want to reside, it's just got everything. It's got something for everyone. Thanks yeah. for joining us. Thank you for joining us. And again, I'm Diane Helms. And I'm Christy Bradadini. And we really appreciate you coming into Red Grass Valley with us. One of the best things about living here in Grass Valley is our history. And no other group made more of an impact than the Cornish miners when they came here to work in the Empire Mine at Hard Rock Mining. And they brought their cuisine. And something that's still here that's delicious is a Cornish pasty. And today, the ladies of Marshall's Pasties is gonna show me how to make a pasty. Let's go see how I do. We're inside where the operation happens here at Marshall's Pasties and we're with Carrie here, one of the owners. Say hi to everybody out there. Hi there. Hey, this is, you got a lot of fans out there, Carrie. Oh, and, and tell everybody, wonderful. Tell everybody how long you've been making pasties in here. Uh, we've been making pasties for 45 years. Right in the same place, right? Yes. The same kitchen, 45 same kitchen, years. 45 years. <laughs> and over here we got the helpers in, uh, what's your name? I'm Carol. And you are? Jesse. And Jesse. And they're going to be busily making those pasties because they've got so many orders all the time. But today, Carrie's actually going to show me how to enrobe the meat and make this beautiful looking pasty. We're going fold over. Fold your corner Oops. in kind of tight. And I'll fold my corner in tight. Tight. Okay. Down. 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 It's going down like the ribbon. Down. And here we go, go now. Over and tuck it with your one finger as you go. Or tuck as it with you roll finger. it, tuck it. Tuck, no, don't just pull it over. All right, pull it over and tuck. Tuck it. And pull then your pasty won't flatten pull out. Pull it over and tuck. But then I, this part's really got to, you got to do it or it'll fall out, right? Yeah, that's not like bad. Around. See, you just have to learn how to push that down. You're doing good. Okay, <laughs> now, now show them now what we do here. This is, and tell everybody what that is. Would you like to do this? Yeah, 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 yeah. Every pasty this. has it's a different hole, so you know what it is. Oh, and that's this a has hole. one. And what holes that for? What did I just say? That's a beak. 
Beef. Okay, it's a beef hole. And beef now this is like the fun part where you get to pan. And then you're going to baste it. Like this? How many mm -hmm. times do I do it? Just like that? Mm -hmm. They're laughing at me. So you don't get too much. How's that? <laughs> well, we're at Marshall's Pasties here on Mill Street in downtown Grass Valley. Thank you so much, <laughs> ladies. You're welcome. Heather McDonald here on the town in downtown Grass Valley, and we're going to go into Grass Valley Gifts and meet the owner. And now I'm inside with the owner. Introduce yourself to everybody. Hi, I'm Chantel, and I'm the owner of Grass Valley Gifts. Chantel, I love the way you have Grass Valley logos on so many things. Tell people what you can put Grass Valley on. Um, pretty much anything. It's pretty in endless. Um, Sweatshirts, t-shirts, tank tops, different sportswear gear, bags. Um, oh, cool. The reusable grocery bags, I can put Grass Valley on them. So right. it's been going really well. So you have things that are really useful, and I see you have a lot of like ball caps. Yes, yes. Um, well, we're very involved in the community with baseball with both of our kids. So oh, okay. we've been slowly growing that part of the business too. So you can put on baseball teams mm -hmm. transfers mm -hmm. too. Oh. Yeah, all sorts of logos and That's different really cool. things for the kids and the youth here in Grass Valley. So we do team hats, and then we oh. also have our hats for sale. Oh, cool. Now what about t-shirts? Tell us about the different kinds of t-shirts you have here for everybody. Um, here at Grass Valley, well, I try to keep a wide variety of t-shirts on hand here, and you can also order anything you need. Mm -hmm. um, I have tank tops, t-shirts, sweatshirts, um, mm -hmm. so in it, any kind of fabric you like, any kind of size, we go from an extra small up to a four tall, uh, tall T, so quite a range of different things I can order people, so okay. it's been fun. Okay, and now remind everybody where you're located. I'm here on Neal Street, 127A, Neal Street, downtown Grass Valley. Yeah, just past the Safeway parking lot and across on the side of the Del Oro is Grass Alley Gifts. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. Well, welcome to Grass Alley Courtyard Suites. Just a short walk to our historic downtown of Grass Alley. Now let's take a look at the suites. Grass Valley Courtyard Suites and Spa in beautiful downtown Grass Valley. My name is Kathy Race. This is my husband, Steve. We built the hotel 11 years ago. This is Sarah Christensen. She is our general manager and she runs the day-to-day -day operation for the Grass Valley Courtyard Suites. Our lovely fountain and landscaping invites everyone to your home away from home atmosphere. Last year we just added new and larger balconies for some of our rooms. The Courtyard Suites has many fabulous features to enhance any vacation, retreat, family reunion, weddings, corporate events, and much more. If you are looking for a romantic getaway, relaxing in the jacuzzi, family barbecues, or getting to know one another again. Our many amenities include, of course, the swimming pool, jacuzzi, barbecue areas, and fitness center. Incredible continental breakfast. And evening reception for all guests after a long day at work or relaxing after a full day of events Grass Valley has to offer. Our day spa pampers you with massages, facials, 
mani-pedis, and hair salon. The Grass Valley Courtyard Suites has its own unique setting with different rooms and suites, each with its own signature. Every room at the Courtyard Suites is special and different from each other. The large suites have full kitchens, living rooms, dining areas, and fireplaces. The home atmosphere is enhanced with all the finishing touches. All of the Courtyard Suites rooms include fresh ground coffee, microwaves, refrigerators, and tempur mattresses to make your stay as comfortable as possible. Our indoor and outdoor meeting facilities are perfect for any corporate event, board of director meeting, presentations, or family reunions. This is Danielle, our assistant general manager. She coordinates all banquets, special events, and groups. If you're in the need for any of these things, please feel free to call Danielle at any time. We have available four groups a catering kitchen as well. Our large patio garden area can also accommodate over a hundred people for a most memorable wedding. Hi and welcome to the Foothills. I'm Marty Caldwell, the owner. Thank you for dropping by and learning more about the Foothills Event Center and what we can do for you. The Foothills Event Center is Nevada County's newest upscale venue located in beautiful foothills of Northern California in Grass Valley. We offer you the finest in celebrations and sophisticated events and make it possible for you to impress your guests with a magical and elegant experience. A reception venue, a theatrical or concert venue, as well as the ability to accommodate outdoor shows and events. There's all kinds of wonderful musical events coming up and we're so excited. Wait till you see this, the lineup we have. We're gonna have dinner theater, we have live music, we have guitarists coming in, musicians. It'll be very exciting to have this here. Again, you know, we have a lot of art in this community, a lot of people that are very artistic and a lot of places to go, but this gives us a nice variety. And we're working with a lot of the other organizations in the area too to bring you to Nevada County Grass Valley and Nevada City and the surrounding areas, some wonderful talent. You can have your wedding here from beginning to end. We offer both the, the uh, ceremony and the banquet afterwards, your reception, and it has accommodates um, up to 140 cars, and we can have up to 600 people, yes. If you have your wedding and ceremony here, the nice thing about the Foothills Event Center is that you can party and have your reception go into the wee hours of the morning because we're indoors, and that means the noise ordinance is not applied to you at all. So that's one benefit of having it. Plus we have air conditioning and heating all new here at the event center. You can visit the Foothills anytime between nine and five, Monday through Friday, and find out more about our event center and what we can do for you and serve your needs. There's always someone here to help you. We look forward to seeing you here at the Foothills Event Center in Grass Valley, California, real soon. I'm at the corner of South Auburn and Empire Streets, and I want you to meet my chiropractor, Dr. Darwin S. Leake here of the Chiropractic Plus Clinic. Hello there, I'm Dr. Darwin Leake, uh, owner and operator of Chiropractic Plus in Grass Valley, California. Been here since 1985 and really like it here. I'd like you to meet Kathy Sousa, office manager, and uh, if you have any difficulties and need an appointment, she'll help you with that. She knows how to do it. I'd like to show you around a little bit, show you what we have here to offer. Well, here we have a full x-ray facility. Uh, so if someone comes in and they've had some trauma or there's a uh, suspicion of a fracture or more serious uh, hard tissue damage, we can do x-rays right here on site. Um, so that's available. Uh, we also have an uh, intersegmental traction table. Uh, that's helpful for people to restore motion in their spine. 
and traction if they have a hot disc or something along those lines. Well, here's one of the treatment rooms in the office and uh, we're able to provide uh, gentle manipulation of the spine to restore motion. Uh, people have trauma, they have injuries, they overdo it at home. Uh, chiropractic manipulation has been shown to uh, facilitate and speed up healing processes. Uh, we deal with uh, motor vehicle accident uh, patients. Uh, weekend warriors uh, that do go out and overdo it on their bicycle or in their triathlon or whatever. And we have ultrasound therapy and laser therapy available. Uh, there are conditions that respond well to that. Uh, sprains, strains, soft tissue swelling. We also offer uh, massage therapy and have a massage therapist on staff uh, to meet your needs there. We welcome you to come in at any time. Thanks. Hello, I'm Shalene Holland, manager of the Alta Sierra Biblical Gardens. I invite you to visit our beautiful gardens with Christ as its theme. The Alto Sierra Biblical Gardens are a nonprofit organization open to the public. These lovely gardens dedicated to God are available for events such as weddings, church and memorial services, and baptisms for a donation. Our gardens tell the story of Christ through statues and artwork displayed along the shady garden paths. A 90-foot cascading waterfall fills the stream which flows through the property, giving many lovely photographic opportunities. A large outdoor chapel can seat 150 guests. The chapel has an altar with brilliant stained glass and a canopy of trees and vines. The picnic grounds may be rented for a rehearsal dinner, Bible studies, luncheons, or a daytime event. No barbecuing or open fires are permitted. Alcohol is also prohibited. Baptisms in the natural pool highlighted by a small waterfall are encouraged with a donation of $10 per person to help with the upkeep of this area. There is also a labyrinth, a sacred tool for prayer. It is a contemplative garden space. The gardens are open daily from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. They are a place of meditation, reflection, and retreat. The sprinklers are on Sunday through Thursday at 7 p.m. We accept any support you can provide from monetary donations to working in the gardens. Contact me at 530-272-1363 or visit our website at www.altasierrabiblicalgardens.org. I'm Heather McDonald and today I'm taking you to beautiful Nevada City. In fact, it's so historic here, the whole downtown is on the National Register of Historic Places. So today, let's go shopping and dining in beautiful downtown Nevada City. Now we're inside California Gold with the owner. Introduce yourself to everybody. My name is Terry Moore. I'm the owner of California Gold Jewelry Store located at 300 Broad Street in downtown Nevada City. And you've got the gold, the real gold nuggets in I California. I do. I do. We have lots of natural gold. The gold in this area is called placer gold, meaning mm -hmm. it's found in the rivers in its natural form. Just like when the gold miners came here, this is what they found and put in their pans. Yeah, that must have been an amazing time when they first came here and they found lots of gold, but there's still gold yeah. to be found in the rivers and this represents jewelry that is wow. made from natural gold. And look at the size of those nuggets. <laughs> wow. There's some big ones there. Yeah, there's all different sizes. The big ones are more suitable for a pendant like this. The smaller mm -hmm. ones can be put in bracelets or earrings or even as a souvenir specimen if people want to take home a sample of gold from the gold country. So each of these necklaces are unique because you just leave the natural shape, the natural shape for hundreds of thousands of years making that gold. However it's found in the rivers is the form in which I keep it and just make a piece of jewelry that utilizes that wow. natural shape. 
So this is a true souvenir of our gold country. And if you're a native Californian, it's a keepsake, a unique keepsake of California to hand down through the generations. I think it is. California is definitely known mm -hmm. for the gold rush and for natural gold nuggets. And people come here specifically to look at and mm -hmm. take home a sample of the gold nugget jewelry. And now, you're, tell me about you're a goldsmith. How long have you been a goldsmith? I've been doing gold jewelry since uh, 1973, so 40 years now. Wow. And I've had the shop here in uh, downtown Nevada City for the last 20 years. And California Gold, that's why it's got the name. He uses California Gold Nuggets here to make these beautiful jewelry and these necklaces. And then there's that, there's a special um, bracelet out there where you put, what, a lot of little nuggets it's, in it? It's called inlay. You have a channel wow. that you inlay the gold into. So each of these links of the bracelet might have 20 individual nuggets that are soldered mm -hmm. in one at a time. So it's a very tedious process, but the end result is beautiful. It's beautiful. It's all beautiful. And then these rings, what a great, I think, a great keepsake ring, a wedding ring. Yeah, I've done a lot of wedding rings with gold nuggets. You know, people enjoy that. And so he is a goldsmith. He can make your special California jewelry right here custom for you. We do a lot of custom work. People come in all the time and have ideas or uh -huh. just what some something custom made with natural nuggets and... We're happy to do that. Well, Terry, it's, this is a great store. You have so much to see. You have a great big displays of both nugget jewelry and the gold quartz jewelry, too, which is in the rock, actually, in the quartz. And then I love the fact that when people come in here, they can get educated. They can see your uh, display here where you have all kinds of gold in different forms. It's fun telling people the story of how gold is found locally. You know, a lot of people yeah. don't realize that. So That's right. it's fun to talk to them about the history of California and the natural gold in the form of either gold quartz or That's gold right. nuggets. And you're in the perfect spot because down, right down here is Deer Creek, and it was called Pound a Day because in its heyday of the gold rush, a pound of gold a day was gotten out of the river gold nuggets like this right here in Deer Creek. Isn't that amazing? It this is, is amazing this is a special, where we live. <laughs> a special part of the world here in Nevada City, California, without a doubt. And thank you for bringing it to us here mm -hmm. at California Gold, 300 Broad Street in downtown Nevada City. Thank you, Heather. Thank you. Hi, I'm Diane Helms. And I'm Christy Bradanini. And we are here today in beautiful Nevada City in front of an old Victorian. It's a gorgeous place to live. Yeah, I'm a native to the area and I can't wait to show you my favorite places. We have been loving this area and living this area for over 40 years. We can't wait to take you on a tour of some of the highlights of the areas that we like the most. So right now we're standing in Nevada City in front of the Nevada Theater, a wonderful place if you love live theater. And it's one of the oldest existing theaters in California. It is. Mark Twain was here, Jack London was here. It's got some great history and great theater still. This is, is the type of history that we have here, the gold miner days and all these fabulous old Victorians and Vicky Tones in our area. All the Victorians that are, you know, every other house in that area, and it's, they're just beautiful. There's such culture here. One of my favorite things are the rivers. Oh, yes. The rivers are right at our fingertips, and they're just such a great place to go cool off. Rock outcroppings and places to explore, and it's just a few minutes from downtown. Exactly. And the trails, lots mm -hmm. of hiking, mountain biking, horseback riding trails in this area. I mean, well, we have BLM land is, you know, all around us. And so it's a lot of open land that you can take your mountain bike and go for miles and miles, get on your horse and do that, stop by the streams and the Yuba River, like you said. And also, you know, the Empire Mine, you know? We just kind of take that for granted because we live here. But that is wonderful history and a great tour to go there. It's also a great destination for family portraits or senior portraits for your student. Oh. Boy, those turn out. I've seen some real beautiful uh, wedding pictures and yes, yeah. family portraits. There's a lot of great uh, wedding venues around here, I've noted, you know. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, there's just so much to offer here, and I think it's just it's quality of life and family and just things to do, not just um, if you're not into bicycling or, or hiking, if you're into just the, in history and checking out the area or music or theater or the arts. Um, there is just, there's just so much here. I know from young to old, whether you're retiring or beginning a family or it's just the place you want to reside, it's just got everything. It's got something for everyone. So we'd like to thank you for joining us today. Right now we're here in Nevada City in front of the Miner's Foundry, a very historic building with a wine tasting room right next door. And again, I'm Diane Helms. And I'm Christy Bradanini. And we are a mother-daughter team. Thank you for touring with us today. And welcome to Home Improvement here on Gold Country TV. And today we're going to learn some new home improvement uh, ideas and learn about, I think, dry rot today from our home improvement expert, Alan D'Andrade of Vintage Home Building and Tile. Hi, Alan. Hi, Heather. Hey. So tell us what dry rot is. We well, dry, know. dry rot is several things. One is when you get lumber that's compressed together and whatnot, and it doesn't breathe and it gets moisture to it and it can't breathe, it doesn't dry out, it's, uh. it tends to rot and, and it once it starts to rot, it doesn't stop. It's like a cancer keeps on going. And um, uh. if, I mean, you find a lot of that when people put their houses on the market, they go to sell it, and the buyers get a termite inspector to come mm. and look at it. And this is what we have here, and the termite inspector found a lot of dry rot, and we got to fix it. Oh, and then, so let's see what it looks like when you take it off, see? Oh, that's just, looks, oh yeah, and the, and the wood feels rotten too. And it happens a lot in other areas too, like bathrooms, and when there's moisture. It happens a lot in bathrooms, you, you're, especially in tub showers where you see moisture okay. on down at the bottom. There's pretty, pretty sure you have dry rot behind the walls. Oh, watch out. And so it's important to fix this, especially if you're selling your home because what, there's inspections for it? Well, yeah, they, when, usually the buyer will hire an inspector to, to look mm -hmm. at it before they buy the home. And they'll find dry rot and then it's up to the seller to, to make good mm -hmm. of it. And so the termite inspectors, they do a termite report. People don't understand. It's not just about termites. It's about other things like right, dry rot, dry, right? Dry rot and other problems like, like that na as that nature. Okay. Um, there could be places where it is not dry rot, but there's dry rot ready to happen. Okay. And they make a report on that for you to fix and so you can put it on the market or so it can go through escrow and close. And sometimes termites is in the same wood as the dry rot. Exactly. So that's why termite companies do it. But you can have, call um, anyone that's in building to fix the problem. It doesn't have to be the company that does the report. Right. Okay, now tell everybody how long you've been uh, building here in Nevada and oh, Placer County. Th 30, 30 years I've been in Nevada County and Placer uh -huh. County. I've been building and doing tile work and, and um, just everything. I'm a B in C54 for 30 okay. years. Well, thank you for being our expert here on Gold Country TV. Thank you.
Heather McDonald here at the Hay Barn, right off Highway 49 near Lake of the Pines. In fact, it serves Placer and Nevada counties. And today we're going to learn all about hay. Hey, they're the hay experts right here at the Hay Barn. Now I'm inside the Hay Barn with the owners, Alan, Jennifer, Dandrod. Hey, welcome back to the show. Hi. And now today you're going to educate us about hay because when I moved up here, a lot of my neighbors said, now they're in the country, the kids want horses and ponies, and they're at a loss of how to properly feed those horses and the different types of hay. So what different types of hay do we have here? We have an, an orchard grass, which is really popular amongst the horse people. We have a straight alfalfa, and then we have an alfalfa grass blend. And all these are suitable for any type of horse. It just depends on what your horse's needs are. Yeah, and so you've raised a lot of horses, haven't you? Uh, yes, so you know. yes, and, and this is what we feed our horses. They really like the mixed grass, alfalfa grass, and um, it, it does really good with them. Keeps the weight on and they perform well. And okay. also, you know, we had goats, and the goats really, the, the, this is great for the goats. The goats really love, goats? love that. All right. Yeah. Goats like any, I hear, see on TV, don't goats eat anything they, or what? They, they <laughs> do, they do, but once you start feeding this, they, they just really love it and, and, oh, okay. and, and makes good for a good pet goat, yeah. And good, and now, what, why is that not the best, maybe? Orchard yeah. grass is the best, it's just, oh, it for, the horse, a lot of horse people like to put the alfalfa in for weight. Ah. And right, and this, if you're not working your horses a lot, you don't want them to have a, a lot of protein, so you give them, you give them this, so. If you're not, if they're not being worked a lot, so they don't get fat and, and oh. whatnot. So this is actually the one, the pro, the premium. Is that what you're saying, right. there? Doesn't have the grass mixed in. It's, it's like just a straight grass hay. So and where does it come from? These, the all of these hays come out of Nevada. Oh, and so these are actually like grown on farms. Big fields. Each individual field is its own type of hay. So alfalfa oh. field, grass oh. field alfalfa grass fields. Okay, so depending on what I have uh, purchased for my new little farm up here, when I'm from the city and don't know anything, I know I can come in here and you're going to advise me on what to feed the animals because we want them to be healthy and good, right? Yes. Jen's a pro. I just, I just, I just do the warehouse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice having a strong husband to move that hay around because I notice your business is growing here. Now you got two barns of hay. <laughs> That's so great. And it's great for us to have experts like this in our community here on Streeter Road near Lake of the Pines in Auburn, California. Thanks for being with us, you two. Thanks, thank you. Thank you. Heather McDonald here at Euro Motors. We're located on Streeter Road right off Highway 49 near Lake of the Pines. And today we're going to learn how to check your tire pressure and how important it is not only to the performance of your car, but how you can save gas money. Hi, I'm Christoph from Euro Motors and I was going to tell you guys a little bit about how to check your tire pressure and how to check the tread on your tires. Uh, I see a lot of cars coming in with uh, underinflated tires and actually the government mandated that every shop start checking tire pressure when the vehicle's in starting in 2011, quite a, quite a ways back. Um, and they mandated every car sold in, in the United States has to have a tire pressure monitoring system. This is the little tire light you see on your dash. You get a lot of cars coming in with that light on. Um, so I figured I'd tell you a little bit about how to check your tire pressure. Now, every car is different and every tire is different. So the best way to see what your tires need to be at are on the driver's door jam, there's a sticker and it tells you exactly what the front tire pressure is supposed to be at and exactly what the rear pressure is supposed to be at. And you wanna follow that on, on your vehicle and set the tire pressure accordingly. Another really important thing to check your tire pressure is you wanna use a quality gauge. Um, the old ones don't do a good enough job of getting the tire pressure just right. So this is a pretty inexpensive gauge you can use. Uh, we use a digital gauge here. We also use these as well. Uh, they, they both work just, just as well. 
Now this specific car here, uh, checking tire pressure is very simple. Uh, it calls for 32 PSI in the front. So it's really easy. I mean, all you, all you do is, you know, with your gauge, you want to check it, and I'm getting a reading of 36. Now, a lot of European cars, if the, the pressure is higher than it should be, you'll also get the tire pressure light, which is a huge misunderstanding. A lot of people fill their tires, and they, when that light comes on, and they pump them all up to 50, 55 PSI, well, that might be a little too high and you'll still have your light come on. It needs to be exactly what the manufacturer of the vehicle states that it should be at. An overinflated tire will wear on the inside of the tire, right in the middle, right here. And because it'll balloon, it won't ride flat on the surface of the, of the road. Uh, another problem with that is you'll get poor handling as well. Um, an underinflated tire does the opposite. You'll get wear on the outer edges of the tire. Uh, once again, you're not getting full contact on the road and you will lose performance, lose traction, braking. Uh, you'll also lose fuel economy. An overinflated tire will be very harsh on the road uh, and an underinflated tire will be a bit spongy and you'll, you can greatly reduce your fuel economy which is why the government stepped in uh, and made it mandatory for people to have the correct tire pressure on their cars and made sure shops were checking it. Because overall, collectively, if all the cars on the road had properly inflated tires, it reduces emissions greatly. Um, another important thing when checking your tire pressure, what I always like to do on every single car that comes in when we're checking tire pressure is to check the tread. Now this tire is about in the middle of its tread wear. Uh, one helpful thing is every tire manufacturer sold here in the United States uh, is required to have tire wear indicators. Um, so it eliminates the need to have a tire wear gauge. Uh, on this car you can see, or on this tire, you can see the wear indicator. There's still plenty of life left. Uh, I do have a tire here that uh, has is worn to the point where we recommend replacing it and it's at the wear marks and you, you'll be able to tell when it's at the wear marks because the tread will be flat with with that mark here um, and so this one has a little more wear on the outer edges than it does on the inside so that could be an indicator of poor alignment or uh, underinflated tire. I'm Christoph here at Euro Motors we're located on Streeter Road off of Highway 49 right in between Grass Valley and Auburn. And we service European vehicles and we specialize in pretty much everything except bodywork. Hi, I'm here at the Lake Center at Lake of the Pines and you're gonna meet Dr. David Molina, one of our premier dentists here in Nevada County. And here I am in Dr. David Molina's office here at Lake of the Pines. Welcome back to the show, Dr. Dave. Thank you, Heather. Glad to be here. Now, what are we talking about today? Well, I thought we'd talk about the mysteries of the mouth. <laughs> Dental myths that are mysteries. sometimes uh, circulating may not be true. Okay, so what do you see as the number one myth maybe you hear? Well, I don't know if it's number one, but it's a very common one, and that's that a uh, little bleeding with brushing is normal. We hear this all the time. I ask them, and they say, well, yeah, I get a little bit of bleeding. Well, if there's any bleeding, that's a problem. The reason why it's bleeding is because there's plaque being left behind, and in that the gum is inflamed, and that's the beginning of periodontal disease. So uh, mm -hmm. it is a problem. Okay, and what about this wisdom tooth myth? Uh, a couple myths about wisdom teeth. One is that every wisdom tooth needs to come out. Not true. If there's enough space, or your jaw is big enough for it to come in, you can clean it. It bites against the other tooth. No problem. Keep it. Uh, usually most mouths are crowded enough that they can only come in part way and then the gum gets hard to clean and it gets inflamed and it's gum problems that are the requirement that cause most wisdom teeth to mm -hmm. have, have those problems. Another wisdom tooth myth is that wisdom teeth cause lower teeth to get crowded. Teeth get crowded for other reasons but it's not wisdom teeth. There's just It's just mm. too far and not enough force for teeth in the back to cause front teeth, so that's not true. Well, isn't bad teeth hereditary? Mm -hmm. uh, no, that's okay. a myth. I, I, we hear that all the time, that oh. uh, the belief that I 
inherited my soft teeth or my bad teeth from my mother or my father. And that, mm -hmm. that's not true. Teeth are teeth are teeth, and teeth are hard when they come in. They turn soft if you put sugar on them, leave plaque. That's what causes teeth to get soft, not hereditary. <laughs> well, now, I've heard people say, I don't need to go to the dentist because my teeth are just fine. I don't need regular checkups. Well, that's one uh, a myth that if nothing hurt, hurts, I'm okay. Or uh, the kind of the corollaries, if it doesn't, uh, if it's not uh, broken, uh, don't fix it type yeah. thing. Well, <laughs> that's that's kind of a myth that if just because there's no symptoms doesn't mean that there's gonna it's gonna be like that in the future. Um, mm -hmm. The whole value of having a dental examination is to take care of things before they become hurt, mm -hmm. symptomatic. If mm -hmm. something hurts, it's probably too late to prevent that from hurting. So mm -hmm. you know you don't wait till it hurts. You take care of it before well, keep a, it from hurting. Well, I have a lot of friends my age, or or they're getting older, and they've had so many teeth problems. Instead of having you come in and fix each one, they say I'm just going to get them all pulled and do yeah. dentures. Yeah, a common myth is that my d dental problems will be over once my teeth are out and I've got dentures. Well, that's kind of a myth. You're really exchanging dental problems for denture problems, which oftentimes are a lot. Dentures are just not as good as far as chewing goes as, uh, that, as your own natural teeth. So we try to preserve people's teeth, uh, mm -hmm. even if you have just several to support a partial denture, that's better than a complete denture. That's, that's a tough one uh, for people to manage, you know, even with good denture. Now here's something you told me was a myth that I actually believe, and all my girlfriends do, that when you get pregnant, the baby actually leaches calcium out of your bones and your teeth. Yeah, that, I'm not sure where that uh, myth came from, but it's very common. I think it's a folklore thing mm -hmm. that, uh, but it's not the case. The, the baby does not rob the calcium from the mother's teeth or bones, for that matter. Uh, the calcium that's used for the formation of the baby is through the mother's diet. You want to have good uh, diet, lots of calcium, but no, it uh, it won't be stolen from you. Wow, so. well, thanks for clearing up some of those myths. Now, the best thing people can do to keep their gums and their teeth going straight uh, strong for the whole of their lives is coming in here and checkups right well there's a lot of good things you can do I, I i would say it's one of the three important things to do one is mm -hmm. to have a dentist uh, check to make check the things that can't be seen uh, by yourself and try to prevent problems before they become uh, right. a toothache that's uh, certainly uh, the other part is what you do at home brushing and flossing is extremely important and oh. the, the third thing is have your teeth cleaned on a regular basis by by good hygienists and we Inside the Rescue for Pet Sake store with the person who's behind this. Introduce yourself to everybody. Hi, I'm Pamela Gorman, the founder of Rescue for Pet Sake. Yes, you are, and that's been going on at least more than 20 years, I'd say. Oh, yeah, over 20 years I've been rescuing dogs. Yes, you have, and now for the first time you have a store. Yes, we have an office and a store in uh -huh. this location. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. yeah. and it's right across from the UPS store here on Bank Street. And so what kind of items are we going to find in here, Pam? Oh, what we are in Grass Valley, right downtown, which is historical downtown on Bank Street, we have collectibles, antiques, and retail items. Some of them are used items. They have to be pretty good quality, though. Um, we don't have a lot of room, so we, we're just keeping good quality items here, gifty items, things mm -hmm. people can use. So if people want to donate, they, they call here and meet with you, and maybe you're going to be a little picky about some of the things you take in? Right, because we're limited on storage, but if you have a nice couch or a chair or something, furniture, mm -hmm. we could always take a picture of that. I'm real good with networking, That's and, right. and um, we can sell it that way. Yes, uh -huh. and 100% of the proceeds go to animals like this. 100% of the proceeds, did you hear that? 100, because you've been volunteering for so long. Pam has her own TV show, in fact, here on Public Access. What's the name of your show? For Pet's Sake. That's and right. it started over 20 years ago. Yes, where she shows the pets there for adoption, like like Bauer, that's his name here. Look, yes. uh, Bauer's smoke. eight weeks old, and he's ready for his forever home. Ready for a forever home, right here. And so you have some of the dogs right here for people to see. Yes. Now, who's this little sweetie? This is Sweet Pea, and she's also in the program. She's a Pomeranian Chihuahua. She's about six years old, and she gives kisses, and she just 
They're so easy. They're just, I love animals. <laughs> now, how can we uh, find you to see what pets are up for adoption? Um, you could go on Facebook. I'm networking. I'm constantly under Pamela Gorman, parentheses, quick, or we have a rescue for pet sake page. Mm -hmm. And they can always call me. We also put them on Pet Finder, adoptapet.com. And um, we uh, have an adoptathon once a month at Petco, first Saturday of every month. Oh, yeah. Once a month she has her adoptathon. And you rescue a lot of dogs that are really having a hard time finding a home. Sometimes. Sometimes we just get them yeah. and they have no issues at all. I mean, they're, these have had a wonderful start. Mm -hmm. These puppies, and there are uh, a few of them behind us. We have two litters of puppies right now. These puppies ended up in Placer County Animal Shelter. They call us, and our wonderful Wendy Horn uh, offered to foster them, and so did Melinda Landsberg. And um, we've got, they're just, they were with their moms. They, they were dumped there. It was a hoarder situation. And uh, we got them the day, the day after they were born. So they've had a wonderful start, and um, if you're interested, <laughs> they can always call me, right? see his face, of course. He's not gonna look at the camera. <laughs> Bower, he's secure. Look, look at that face. He belongs in a forever home. And then you can help them, even if you can't adopt them, you can help them by coming to the store here and buying something. Yes, yes. We have many <laughs> items that um, people, variety of items, antiques, like I said, collectibles. And also, back to regarding foster. We do need foster homes. We oh, need yes, volunteers. And we need... Um, Oh, God, volunteers of foster homes and forever homes, obviously. And they could always come in and, and uh -huh. talk to me about our program, our policies, okay. and how we do now, things. Now, when's the store open? The store opens uh, Tuesday through Saturday, 11 to 4. And what used to be here? Because they might know who Dr. Heard. William DeBro was uh, practicing here in this office, and I actually was working for him. For many years. For, for about really? 10 years. And um, we, we pondered it, and uh, wonderful Beverly Marks, who owns the building, offered a wonderful lease, lease situation where we would be able to afford it. Mm -hmm. And um, now we get to use the building to help these wonderful animals that come from all over, not just Grass Valley. Okay. I've, I've actually save dogs out of Georgia. Yes, I know. She saves a lot of animals. So rescue for pet sake right here across from the UPS store in historic downtown Grass Valley. Thanks for being with us, Pam. Thank you. Hi, it's Marty Caldwell. We're at Rough and Ready Vineyards and Guest House. It's a family-owned vineyard and guest house here that sleeps 16 people. We're welcoming you here to see a little bit more about our wonderful facility. Our unique 16-acre estate under the Heritage Oaks has plenty of room for your family and friends to get together, spend some time, barbecuing, exploring, enjoying beautiful Nevada County, and celebrating any event you might have to gather together for. Here at the Rough and Ready Vineyards and Guest House, we have a beautiful vacation rental. It's four bedrooms, three baths, and has beds for 16 people. We have an elegant master suite that has a beautiful bath, including a clawfoot tub. most unique features here at the guest house is our beauty salon. It has a chair and sink. We also have a dressing room. Besides the master bedroom, we have three private bedrooms and a sunroom, all featuring sleeping for your guests. We have a great room that features a wood-burning stove, a large screen TV complete with satellite. We have a fully equipped kitchen that really is a perfect place for a family to gather cook together and share. We have an on-site chapel that can be used for many things. Some guests have used it for weddings, receptions, 
family reunions, dinners, or just as a gathering place with family and friends. Our beautiful 16 acres features an Italian marble gazebo, many meadows, a bridge over our seasonal creek, and of course our family vineyard, which you're free to walk through or even plan intimate dinners between the vines. Thank you.